Welcome to the Unspoken Truth Podcast. We here to bring you another episode of Tampa Bay News. All right, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. If y'all didn't know, they lost to the New York sorry ass Giants, thirty two to thirty one. We're both one and two. Uh, the, the Giants replaced Eli Manning with Daniel Jones, their new rookie. Well, I guess I think he's a rookie. And um, he, okay, okay, he's a rookie. And, uh, yeah, man, uh, Daniel Jones with 23 for 36, 336 yards, two touchdowns. And uh, the nigga ran in for, for two touchdowns as well. So he scored four touchdowns uh, on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And, you know, I'm going to just go ahead and say, man, the Bucs did a, an amazing job. Jameis Winston game tightened up. He threw one interception. It is what it is. He had three touchdowns. He was 23 for 37, 380 yards. Ronald Jones, 14 carries, 80 yards, 5.7. Uh, Peyton Barber, four, uh, 13 carries, 48 yards. And Mike Evans, man. Mike Evans, 8 receptions, 190 yards, 23.8 average, and 3 touchdowns. Yeah, bro. So give it up for Mike Evans, man. I was uh, a little concerned last week about about you know um about him getting the ball and just him getting touchdown that's what i want i want to see them touchdown so i understand or whatever now oj howard man i, I kind of want him to step his game up because i ain't really too impressed with him uh this year and i don't know what happened to Tanner hudson but we need to get that motherfucker out there you know i don't know if he got cut or whatever but man we need to find a way to get him included into that offense our defense didn't do so well uh, we, 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 I don't know, I don't know. To me, I felt like they looked like the old Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Well, it de- definitely in the second half. In the second half, they definitely looked like the old Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Well, I wouldn't say the old Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the new Tampa Bay Buccaneers that they are now. So, until they prove us otherwise, that they can step their game up. So, we got my dog B-Ham on the line. B-Ham finna take over. Um, yesterday, he was smoking hot. He said, uh, "He said, uh, hey man, you might want to have your have your uh, have your censorship uh, bleeps ready." So uh, I don't know if he cooled down or not, bro. You cooled down? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. You know, after sleeping the night off and realizing that you know the bugs just don't bug, and you know we done been fans all of our lives for uh, other bugs, and I think every bugs fan realized it's hard to be a Tampa Bay bug in their fan, especially. Because we've only had what that was only with like a six, seven year span of good Buccaneers football. It ain't like, you know, the Bucks been good forever. Yeah, we had some ugly days going back to them that orange fickle and white and you know, in, in um Hoolahan Stadium. There's, there's some battle. But anyway, no, I'm I'm good. I'm good, I'm good. You know, but I, I do have two two words, one player. Matt Gay. And a Senate. No. Go get Jalen Ramsey. Jalen Ramsey. Jalen Ramsey. Bro, he not coming to Tampa because Bay. Look, because, but, but, so, I'm going to kind of go backwards on this today. When you look at it, there is no reason why, as a team, you're up 28-10 to 10 that you lose. I don't care if the offense don't score a single point in the set you have. In an NFL team, if you have a defense... Come on, JB. If you're up 28 to 10, how do you let a team score and come back down 18 points? It ain't no excuse for it. It ain't no excuse for like, it. I, and then it's not like the Eli Manning of the young days of Eli Manning was playing. We're talking about a rookie quarterback. Leading a team down 18, it, 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 would, it would be one thing if the Giants were on top 18. You can say, oh, this rookie quarterback, you know, he came out, didn't have really pressure on him, he looked amazing. This man came from 18 points down. That is not that is not an easy task where you would think not, but as the Buccaneers have shown, rookie quarterbacks and backup quarterbacks look like pro bowlers and Hall of Famers when they play the Bucs defense. Well, you, and then that last, the last drive, as a defense that has gotten so much credit the first two weeks, if you want to be taken serious, how do you let a rookie quarterback go 75 yards down the field with one minute and 16 seconds left to win the mother freaking game? Well, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. Um, I'm not going to give... 
I'm not going to go too hard on the Bucks defense because they get they, they did give us a good solid two weeks. But I will say this. Uh, one thing about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers that we experienced last night or yesterday was that we weren't able to prepare for that new quarterback. So it's either he's really good or he's he's okay. But the whole point is now the rest of the league is going to look at our tapes and study his ass. And, and we weren't able to, to prepare for him. Yeah, but I don't, I don't, I'm sorry. I, 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 I don't think that's an excuse because they did, the first half, when you look at the first half, the Giants was only held to 10 points. Like, I mean, yeah, he was putting up numbers in the first half, but the Bucks defense was able to keep him out of the end zone, had a field goal, and a touchdown. But then you come to the second half, that's what I told you yesterday, I blame coaching. That first touchdown was the first drive in, like, seconds. It was a one play, and they scored off rip coming out the second half. That tells you these players were not ready coming out of the locker room. And you're like, okay, we'll give up a touchdown. It's 28-17. You know, you still got a cushion. Yeah. The Bucks, no matter what, no matter the coaching staff, I feel like there's, like, this aroma in Raymond James Stadium, like, this clouding over one buck play. The Bucks get so conservative when they get leads. That's why a lot of times I hate when the Bucks get big leads. And this has been, you know, over years we talked about it. As soon as they get this big lead, they start playing conservative. They start, you know, going back on plays. No, this is NFL. Keep going down their throat. Don't keep giving and letting the team have life and you take your foot off the gas. No. Keep pumping it. And that's what the Bucks did. They got conservative and they play calling. Starting playing, you you had Jameis throw interception with the game. Interceptions are going to happen, and I think that's what we have to. You know, there's so much of this Jameis blame game that goes on, and I and he, I can, you know, I'm, I'm one of Jameis' biggest supporters, and I know mm-hmm. last week I threw him under fire, like he has to go. But we also have to realize when Jameis plays well, and if you look at Jameis' career here in campus and this game yesterday. Jameis put the Bucks in a position to win. That last drive, a 44-yard bomb to Mike Evans to put them in field goal range that a high school kicker would probably make from 34 yards. And we have an NFL kicker that can't even make it from 34 yards. And on paper, it looks like another loss for Jameis. And I, I kind of was thinking about this earlier today, too. How many times has Jameis Winston put the Bucks in a winning situation but the defense allows the exactly. other team to win or they miss a field goal. Exactly. That That's happened in like six, seven games. It, 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 it happens a lot. Jameis has always put us in a position to win more than a position to lose. Uh, I, I, I would say he's at least at a six seat to I, I, I'm, I'm going to give him 65 to 79 percent. I'm going to say 80 percent. Hell, hell. Um, you know, chance to win the game. It's always been the defense that always let up and I hell I'm gonna give him more credit than that I'm gonna say between 70 and 85 percent chance of winning the game because that, that, and that's what I, that's why I was so critical of the defense because the defense always let up no matter how many points we put on the board we could put up 42 points just somehow we gonna end up we gonna end up finding a way to lose the game the last two goddamn minutes now I will say this now I will say this the new quarterback, Daniel Jones, is a lot more athletic than what I thought. Because he's, he's, he's athletic. He's athletic. Like, And I think that threw people off guard, which is why I was saying uh, we didn't know how to really prepare for him. Because he was doing shit that Cam Newton should have done last week. You know what I'm saying? Like, like and um, I got to give him a lot of credit for that. You know, you know especially on that last play. Um, when he scored, that caught everybody off guard. The shit even caught me off guard. I, I think the most demoralizing part, though, for a Bucks fan, they're not home at home. They don't have another home game. Looking at the schedule now until November 10th, because you know they're in LA. They go to New Orleans and then that uh, London game. So they're, 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 it's over a month until they come back to Raymond James Stadium. They're only two at home and it's like when you think about it it's like dang how many different ways can the Tampa Bay Buccaneers lose a football game it, and it's painful and then you wonder when you look at the game on Sundays and people talk about oh the Bucks the fan 
how do you, how can an organization you expect fans to keep coming back every year when you put a terrible product on the field? And it's like, it, it's just crazy that regime change after coaching change, after quarterback, like, all these new people come in, but the same thing happens, and it's losing football in Tampa Bay. And as fans, we're sitting here like, okay, when, are, when is our time? When are we going to have a San Francisco now 3-0 on the year? When are we going to have an L.A. Rams season? When are we going to turn the knots back up like the Saints? Like, like when, is, when is it going to be the bus stop? Like, how many more losing seasons do we have to take? And I've never been a fan of Jason Light. Let's get it out there. Because Matt Gay is on him. Matt, speaking of Matt Gay, two minutes extra point that we wouldn't even needed that last field goal. And how do you miss a 34-yard field goal? Like, that's just inexcusable. I could see that was like a 56-yard, a 54-yard, a 57, you know, 50-plus. Okay. So long. But a 34-yard field goal? All right. So, actually, let me ask you this. Who actually lost the game? We know the Bucks lost the game, but is it is it more so targeted towards the, the defense? The defense, the defense, or the kicker lost the game? The defense is supposed to take off again. Okay, now, now. And then you could add the coaching. I, I would blame you. I, okay, let me let me break this down and put ten So I give twenty percent of the blame to Byron Leftwich and his play calling in the second half. So we put Leftwich. In offense, 20%. Defense gets the, uh, the, um, 40%. And then the, uh, special teams gets the 40%. And more so special teams, because I mean, those are easy points. Those extra points should be made. And those are, that's two points. The Bucks lost by one. You make it that, those two extra points, that's the difference. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you got to point. But that's the same story, though. How many times have we talked about Bucks and special teams and, and a kicker? Out of all positions, a kicker. Do you feel like the kicker should be fired? Because I feel like I feel like when I woke up this morning, I was looking for I was looking for some reports on Google for him to be out of here, and uh, I'm still oh, looking around, and he ain't fired yet. Reading today, uh, Bruce uh, had a press conference uh, Monday morning, this morning, and he said, he said the kick was not going anywhere. But I think that's just a reaction from fans. You're like, oh, get rid of them. And I mean, you can't get rid of a kicker just for missing one field goal. I mean, and again, being realistic, kickers are going to miss field goals. I mean, you know, kicker, out of it, a theory. So we talked yesterday about the girl Bucks days, Automatica and Matt Bryan. They didn't make all those field goals. The kickers are going to miss. But I think the thing is, if he missed another game game winner or another 34 yard, he's definitely going. Um, but I mean, kickers are going to miss. So I think that was just, you know, a, a Monday morning quarterback, like, oh, he has to go. But overall, I mean, three games, he hasn't been terrible. Um, he just had a terrible game yesterday with those two missed extra points in the field goal. But I mean, if he had another one of those moments, he's definitely going. But I think, you know, being a rookie quicker, you kind of give him a break and hope his psyche doesn't get messed up by missing a game winner. Because you had to know going in that locker room last night, just imagine the look from other players and the, the, especially Mike Evans. Like, how do you waste a talented game like that from your all-star wide receiver? Yeah, it was almost like it was, it was almost like it didn't count for him because they didn't get the W. And then you waste the awesome game from Shaq Barry. I'm looking like he had four sacks yesterday. And I think he's actually, I'm trying to find a sack. I want to say he's almost leading the league right now in sacks. Um, you know, he's, he came from Denver in the offseason having a big, big, big year. And, it, and so going back to Sunday like defense, I brought up Jalen Ramsey's name in the beginning of the podcast. We're not going to get Jalen Ramsey, bro. Leave it long, bro. <laughs> If you're Jason Light, which it's I not going to happen. He's think, not coming to the Bucks, bro. He's a terrible. I think Jason Light is a terrible deal, and it shows with shit. The special things we have. I feel like we need to get rid of the whole fucking Glazer. I've been saying, I've been saying this a while back now. Now I might sound a little disrespectful. Uh, uh, 
I agree. I think the Glazers need to go. I think they need to need to sell the team. I agree, and I mean, not. I think the Glazers need to go in a way because it seems a lot of times that they don't care about the direction of the team, but they are also not the people making decisions. They're not making these trades. They're not getting, making the draft trades. Now, now they may be signing off on some of the draft picks, but Jason Light is the total blame for this roster, and I don't know how they renewed his contract. When you look at the recent draft picks and the failures of these draft picks, I'm pulling them up right now. Um, these recent years of, of who the Bucks have drafted, they've been terrible. And so that all goes on Jason Light. Um, so when you say they don't <laughs> Jalen Ramsey, and that's the problem with the Buccaneers. The Buccaneers have never been a splash team. If you think about the last splash the Bucs have made, you can say Deshaun Jackson, that was a free agency move. He came here on his own. Darrell Weavis was a free agent move. A key to uh, uh, well, well, oh, 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 you talking about, you, oh, you just talking about uh, free agency right now. No, I mean, like, oh, trades. The Bucs just want to get a player. Well, the last time, well, I'm gonna tell you the other cornerback that, that that I like that we had. I like when we had Aqib Talib. I like when we had him. We couldn't, and that's why I say we need to get rid of the 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 Glazers or or I guess keep swapping GMs because the, I I feel like I feel like since the beginning of the time, besides that little run that we had with with All Star. Um, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, Sab Brooks. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly, exactly. But I feel like during that time, during that time, um, that was cool. But I feel like since the beginning of time, we could never really keep real talent on our team. Not raw players. I mean, I I, I even disagreed when we got rid of Legarrette Blount. I'm like, how the hell could we get rid of that guy? And he started with the Bucks. I'm like, bro, how could y'all get rid of this guy? Like, how? And then when Aqib Tlaib left, of course, he had a fallout with the coaches or whatever. But we had Steve Young. We had so many. Bro, it was, bro, like, I, I, I don't know if it's the Glazers or I don't know if it's the gym. Because I feel like at, at the end of the day, man, we've had the players. We've definitely had the players. But how come they're not staying? And this is why I said... This is why I said we keep on losing like this. Mike Evans won't be there next year or the year after that. Because Mike Evans, he's too much of a good talent to be sitting around in Tampa Bay and to be loyal to us. If I'm Mike Evans, I ain't trying to sit on those on no no Tampa Bay sucking ears like this and keep on taking all the frustration. You wanna hit the playoffs. And he ain't never been to the playoffs, has he? No. Man, look, man, this is some bullshit. We got Jameis Winston. Now, Jameis, I feel like he'll be a buck for life as long as we let him. <laughs> that's just that's just how I feel. I feel like Jameis is truly a buccaneer. But Mike Evans is not truly a buccaneer. He will only truly be a buccaneer if he sees the light. I think that light is dimming down, and I think Mike Evans about to get the fuck up out of there. And then what we going to do? Then what we going to do? We couldn't take advantage of the players when we had them. And somebody got to pay for this shit. Somebody got to pay. Like, I'm tired of having... It's not like we don't have great players. We do. Especially offensively. You know what I mean? But we have the players. Maybe not enough key key players. But we got enough to make them shit shake. What the fuck is going on? Like, and like I said, we only lost two games. But but we got to go see the Rams next week. That's what I'm saying. We just said make it shake. Why not go get a Jalen Ramsey? Why not go? Bro, get we not finna get him. You just know that's not bro. You why do you think Jalen? I'm and I'm gonna tell you why we not gonna get him. We're not gonna get him because Jalen Jalen likes to talk trash. And I always knew this. When that nigga was talking all that trash, when they was winning for that only one season or two, he was talking all the trash in the world. And then all of a sudden, when shit started going downhill, he shut up. He shut up because, of course, he wanted to get the contract renewed. And it's just not a good look as a, as a player when your team is, is sorry. And then you're going to keep on talking trash like you the cash cow out here. Or or, or like you that guy. Or like you that dude. You are that dude. I think, but he, 
he was that guy. He made the pro. I, I, so well, no, that's I what, what I just said. That, no, like, no, that was my mistake. That, that that was my mistake. He is that guy, but Jalen Ramsey is frustrated because he is losing. And I knew, bro. I promise you. I promise you. We've never talked about this before, but bro, I promise you. When they started losing, especially at the beginning of the year. The, of this season, I said, "Oh, Jalen Ramsey ain't gonna want to be there." And I knew it. I knew it. And then what? And then the next thing I know, uh, a couple of days later, he's requesting a trade. And he, come on, he's losing it on top of the coaching too. He got into a big, big argument with the coach and on the sideline. I don't know if you saw that. He, like, they had to be pulled away. But I, I, I always watch say Jalen Ramsey because again, I've always been big on the Bucks defense and how terrible it is. Now, let's show the size of light. Of course, the first two weeks, they were playing They were playing good. This week, they let a rookie quarterback expose them for, they looked like the Bucks defense of last year. Like, every pass was getting over their head. Morgan Hargrave got burned, Carlton Davis. We have no safety. Man, that's a good quarterback, like, though, man. He's a good quarterback. To, to me, last night, he was looking like a, he was looking like a, he was looking like a, a, a Pro yeah, Bowl quarterback. Again, how many Bucks? How many quarterbacks have the Bucks let look like that? And then the next week, that quarterback look looks like he's back to uh, playing high school. That's what I'm saying. The Bucks <laughs> defense lets these quarterbacks look like that, and then they get sent back to real life when they play a team the following week. That's happened every single time. Yeah, that's true. So it's like our but safeties are terrible. Justin Evans is still hurt. That's no, that seems like a wasted draft pick. So it's like we don't have safeties. Like we don't have. It's like, a secondary. It's like still the secondary, bro. It's still the secondary. So, so why not go get a Jalen Ramsey bro. that has played with Jameis Winston? They played at Florida State together. Man, so you, you already have somebody that he can trust and know, and you already know Jalen's skill set. Yeah. And yeah. I, the Bucks need that trash. That, like their defense. Like a defense should be filled with trash talk. Like you need that. Yeah, anger, we need that. that. We need that. that. We need that. Just, like that. Like Snap needs to talk trash. Now, granted, the Bucks were good, so Snap could talk the trash, and the team would back it up. Yeah. But the Bucks need they they need a trap. Like they need that anger because if they had that anger, yesterday wouldn't have happened. There would have been somebody in that huddle like, "Look, mother effers, we not letting this eighteen point lead go." <laughs> but I'm serious, like. Do you think he would have just been quiet like Bruh, dog? He would have cussed him out. He would have cussed him out. I remember a long time ago. I don't even know if you remember this game, but I remember it like it was yesterday when the Bucks played the Steelers at home and Jerome Bettis had had broke out for like 40, 50 something yards while Sap was on the sideline and he clean cussed the whole defense out like what the fuck? How the hell y'all let that happen? And you know I, I I get it. I get it. I just think that. I just think that bringing up, not bringing up Jalen Ramsey, you know, I would love for him to be on the squad, but also too, man, you're absolutely right with the whole Jalen Ram. I mean, with the whole um, 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 our quarterback, uh, Jameis Winston, uh, you know, combo and stuff like that. But number one, this ain't college no more, and number two, I don't think that's just a reality. This is pro, and he don't want to lose, and. It, you know, unless he want to stay in Florida, then I can see it being a being a reality. But but, but other I think is the, the Bucks are not a terrible like terrible team. We ain't the Miami Dolphins. Like the Bucks have talent, they just we're the best team Jason in Florida. Light has just, Jason Light has just put terrible pieces and draft picks in the places. And if you if you can't come by now, I just want Jason Light to be fired. Like he's he's a terrible GM. I don't understand how his contract got renewed, like he is terrible. And so my thing is, as you mentioned, Mike Evans is on a leash. Jameis Winston's contract is up this year. You have a short window to show your young player that we are about to make the playoffs. So why not go make a splash to show your organ to show your fan and more so your fan base that you are trying to win. Like the, what, what can you say that the Bucks have shown? Oh yeah, they want to win. Nothing. Going out again, Bruce Aaron. Okay. I mean, bro. Yeah, we have. I mean, we have shown that we want to win. Now, I don't understand. I don't understand why we got Bruce Arians. I mean, I mean, I, that that didn't make no sense to me because he's more he's more so of an offensive mind, right? I mean, I, I'm not mad with the Bruce Arians 
Higher, I, I mean, no, 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 but answer the question though. No, but answer the question. Isn't he more, doesn't he specialize more into offense? I mean, it was, yeah, I mean, I guess he's doing more offense. Okay, okay. Overall, like when he was in Arizona, you know, he took that Kurt Warren team. He also, um, Carlson, or yeah, Carlson Palmer. Okay. You know, he kind of helped. Okay, now check this out. Check this out. This is why I feel like we didn't need him. Our offense was already straight. We're going to put n numbers on the board. So I feel like he did nothing different. He, he's not doing anything. If anything, if anything, if anything, our offense has gotten worse with him. If you really want to go there. If you want to compare the last three years. But again, that goes on Jason Light. And because they made no changes in offense, we freaking didn't go get a running back this offseason with all of these running backs landing in other different places. All of these running backs, the Melvin Gordon wanted to be played, Le'Veon Bell, freaking Cleveland wanted to get rid of Duke Johnson. Like, all these running backs, and we were like, yeah, Ronald Jones and Peyton Barber. Peyton Barber's our starter. That goes on Jason White. Like, you, you can't, like, that, that goes on the DM to look at a roster and improve it. And he just sat there thinking our own was good. He didn't improve the offensive line. He didn't improve the running backs. So if you don't, as a, you know, the coach, don't go out and sign players. That's the GM. All right, man. All right, man. So on one end, we need an offensive line. Then we, now we, and, and of course, and of course, I agree with you. And we need a, a running back. We need some better secondary. Which one, which one, if you are the GM, if Brandon Hamilton, B. Ham, is the GM right now? What what will be your first move besides a Jalen Ramsey right now? I I I put it like this: What will be your move in the in the off season, in a draft class, in, in a draft that you would go for? Secondary and secondary and offensive line. I mean, I would hit the secondary first pick, and then the offensive line was the second one, and then. But again, this also depends how the Bucks season shakes up because. Uh, realistically, um, JP comes back. I don't know how long he's out. Uh, it shouldn't be that much longer. Jason Pierre-Paul comes back. So that's added to the line. Um, 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 Devin White who did not play yesterday because he was hurt. So he's probably back playing linebacker. And Justin Evans, I, who knows how long he's out. So... Vernon Hargraves, I just... He's too little, man. He's just too little, bro. As, as, as much as I want... He's all right, though, but but, but, that but but that's just one game of just this season. But he's still too little. Like I told you last week, I saw a lot of times overall, when he was getting burnt. Overall, his NFL career, overall, his NFL career is not been good, so... Hey man, well you said it, and they're and they're listening right now. Hey Tampa Bay Buccaneers, we want Jalen Ramsey. Now I will say this though, I will say this now. Now let's be real. Now I have a difference. I have a difference in this, and and when I say this, Tampa Bay fans, and I say this, NFL fans, don't don't come at me with a whole bunch of fire. I'm just speaking from what I really know. Uh, just just how I view it as a as a uh, consumer and a, and a fan of the game. I feel like Jalen Ramsey is a solid corner. I do not feel like he's raw or or special. I feel like he's just a 100%, 98-99% solid shutdown corner. What do you agree or not? I feel like special and raw is like prime time type shit. Like no, I, I mean, I think Jalen Ramsey has a position. I mean, I think he's a special talent. You think I just don't think he's being used right in Jacksonville right now. Um, I, I think he has the potential to be one of those great secondary, one of those great safeties in, in, in the league. Now, is he going to be, you know, when you think of the great safety like the Bucks have had, like a Dom Lynch, I don't can't really say that now, but I mean, it, 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 if you look at his beginning and that early on, I mean, he's he definitely has it. I mean, and you, you think of his first year, I mean, he, teams weren't going against him. Like, I mean, teams were scared to go against him. And Wait, is he a corner or safety? My bad. Is he a corner or safety? I, he's, 
He plays, plays both. They see a lot. He plays yeah, both. He, he switches down to, to, to both. Like it just depends on the on the defense. And so now, if he playing safety, if he playing safety, I'll take it. I'll take it. I mean, he, he, even corner, I'll take him at corner. But I want him more so. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's out. Yeah, he, he he plays corner a lot. But so think about it. If you're an offensive coordinator, game planning, and you play the Bucks this week, who who are you scared of in the Bucks secondary? I'm not scared of none of them niggas. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but I, but I can for sure tell you, if Jalen Ramsey over there, I'm not gonna be throwing it over there like that. Or I mean, and, and, I mean, and, and Jalen Ramsey. Which I'm just only saying that because you know he wants to be out in Jacksonville. But any other team, you can think of. There are players on other teams that you game plan around not to go their direction. You don't do that on anybody on the Bucks defense, and that's the problem. On the offense, you know, teams game plan to stop Mike Evans. On the defensive side, nobody is game planning to against none of our players. That is a problem. They're not even they're not even scared of Levante David. Now I feel like that's probably the only person who they who they're looking at in the defense. They're like, all right, all right, cool, all right, cool. As long as we kind of keep Levante out the mix, but he's gonna he's he's gonna get his bucket. He's gonna get his, he, he's gonna get his. So you you can't yeah, stop. I mean, he messed up last night because he, he saw that last touchdown that Daniel Jones scored. Man, everybody that shit caught everybody by surprise. That was a rookie quarterback, and he was athletic. We didn't know that. We didn't know that cat like that. Fourth and five. Fourth and five, there was nobody. Of course, nobody was there, but nobody. But all the receivers was covered. That was—I feel like that was a a, a defensive coordinator uh, mistake because he didn't—he didn't. He I, didn't it he, was, but I, but I say the middle because Levante Davis is the middle linebacker. Yeah, he's supposed to be there. Of course, of course, he's supposed to be there. But you know, like I say, like I say, they were back playing. Uh, th- well, they played zone. Well, they played zone, so yeah, he should have been there. But we don't know what the routes were that he was supposed to uh, cover. Uh, we don't know what part of the field that he was supposed to cover during that time. That's why I feel like that was a defensive coordinator fault. I mean, if he had a if he had a call to play to have um, um, Levante just sit there in the middle and just patrol the quarterback, then that then that's a different story. Then that's all on Levante. But you know, uh, no, no, not Levante, Levante, but. Because he ran straight down the middle and nobody was there. That's you can't tell me Levante wouldn't have picked up on that if he had been, especially if that was his assignment. I'm just tired of the Bucks losing more. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm tired of I'm tired of just sitting here and like they find different ways to lose. Like it's I'm, as much as I hate, you know, I'm, I'm just tired. Can we make the Buccaneers great again? Let, let's start that slogan. I'm wow, I'm really? <laughs> make the Buccaneers great again? I think I want to say something else. But, but yeah, I get you, though. I'm just talking to the Buccaneers because now, you know, moving forward, you look at the schedule, the Bucs could very well be 1-4 and four coming back to play the Panthers. They play the Rams in L.A. next week. Well, good thing, well, good thing we facing Teddy Bridgewater. And But the, uh, the Saints looked good yesterday. Did they so, win? Bridgewater looked, yeah, Bridgewater looked good yesterday. Oh, I didn't look at the highlights. And of course, of course, Alvin Kamara was running all over everywhere yesterday. They beat the Seahawks, thirty-three to twenty-seven. They're two and one. All right. Well, hey man, check this out. You know. And and that's in New Orleans with Michael Thomas still catching the ball for the Saints, like his Pro Bowl season. So. And I was, it's just the Bucks can, can very well be one and four going to Carolina, and their team is in disarray right now. So. Hey man, hey man, I'm gonna say this right now, bro. We finna beat the Rams next week, bro. That's the win we need right there. Of course, we need every win, but in order to impress this league, we get, we we got to come back because that 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 Giants loss. We can flip that. We can flip that. Of course, everybody know they won by luck. You, you know, they clearly won by luck. I mean, the fucking kicker just missing the fucking field goals and shit. Like, you know, come on, bro. Y'all didn't really earn that win. So, if we go to, if we go to L.A. and we take that win, bro, that's a good-ass look. I got a question for you. So, if the Bucks can stop a rookie Daniel Jones, do you think the Bucks defense can handle uh, Jared Goff? Look, bro. Look, this is why. Hey, man, this is why we finna get Jalen Ramsey, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, 
And then if the Bucks offensive line can't block then the Bucks offensive line can really uh block Aaron Donald. Yeah, I see it being a wild night, a wild day for Jameis Winston in that backfield. I, I see, mean, I see. Gurley on the other side. I mean, now the Bucks defense, the, the line has done a good job of stopping, you know, these star running backs we face. But Todd Gurley is on the other side. And that's, that's, that's why when, when we talked last week, I was like, you know, we should be the Giants because then we'll be 2-1 and one going to LA. Then you give yourself a cushion. Now we're 1-2 and two going to a good Ram team. You think the Bucks win? I don't think the Bucks win. I don't think they're gonna win, but we're going to win. <laughs> it, Wait, how did, how I don't did, think we're going to win. My honest opinion, but we're going to win. It's just gonna happen somehow. And I'm being real. Like I, I, I am a hundred percent diehard Bucks fan. I will root for the Bucks until I leave the post, but. I don't, I mean, and that, that's just, man, because you know, like, a lot of times we'll talk to fans, like, oh, you shouldn't train your team, you're going to lose. No, I'm being realistic. I, like, I, I don't. After seeing Sunday, and the Bucks would have played, if the Bucks would have continued to play, like, the first half Bucks yesterday, and they played like that in the second half, I would have been like, yeah, they look like a completely different team. But after that falling yesterday, I, I just, don't see them winning. Now, I hope I'm wrong, and the Bucks have shown that a lot of times they do play to their competition. Um, but I, I, I just don't, I don't see them beating the Rams. Yeah. Hey, man, my honest opinion, I don't think they're going to win either. Um, it's up for grabs with the Saints, and I don't see that either. But, like I said, man, to have high hopes as a Buck fan, we're going to win, bro. We're going to find a way. We're going to find a way, bro. We're about to get Jalen Ramsey, all right? <laughs> now, two weeks from now, we can revisit this podcast. If the Bucks are one and four, I guarantee you there's going to be some shakeup. What shake? What you talking about? Like in the off season? Because it, it, it ain't nobody you coming to Tampa. I'm talking about like I, there has I'm, I, there has to be, there will be some kind of like some kind of shakeup will be happening. Either play calling, who he, I, I just don't see how Jason Light again as a GM. At another one and four season, like you, and that's again. I don't know he had a, how he got a contract extension. Like the Bucks have been under five hundred for every season under him, except that one with they uh, the first year. Um, I think that was the first year or last year with Dirk Cotter, um that took over, and it, they should have been trash on, on these other years. Like I, I don't see how his contract got renewed and the thing is the Bucks are 1-4 as a GM you can't sit here and allow your team to be 1-4 I think you, you, you just can't Bro, you really think you know, Jalen? You so so so. Uh, let's be real. You really think Jalen Ramsey coming? He not coming to Tampa Bay. Bro. I'm I'm not even saying Jalen Ramsey. I'm just saying there has to be some shakeup. Yeah, 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 yeah. I agree with that. But do you think Jalen Ramsey coming to Tampa? No, realistically, no, I don't. I mean, I would hope he does, but I, I don't think the Bucks have the the courage to make that kind of move, and that's why I do not like Jason Light as a GM. He doesn't have the guts, the balls, whatever you want to say to make those kind of moves to risk draft picks because as we saw previously when people wanted him to move up in the draft he didn't do it instead he went and moved up to draft a kicker who is no longer on the team or even in the NFL so it's like his <laughs> his mind thinking that's going to prove this team just baffles me and I want to get I hope they don't go one and four I would love the Bucks to go three and two in these next two weeks and come out with a 3-2 and two record. But realistically, going to LA to face a 3-0 and Rams team, that's going to be hard. And you talk about playing in the Superdome in New Orleans? Come on now. Like, I mean, if those are two teams that are going to be very hard to beat. And I just don't see the Bucks winning none of them games. So you look at 1-4. and four, That's it. That's teams, it. That's, a, that's it for the rest of the year. If we go 1-4, and four, we're not going yeah. to play off. It, it, no, most teams make the playoffs with eleven and five, ten and six records. Yeah, if we go one and four. We're not going to the playoffs. The season's over. That's what I'm saying. You have to shake. <laughs> if the Bucks lose against the Rams and, and the Browns, the, the seat, I mean, the, the Rams and the Saints, the season's over already. Five five games in, the season's over. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much, and, and then we so, got and then we got to play the Panthers right after that. 
Yeah. And they're not trying to lose. <laughs> I mean, the Bucs season does not get easier. The, the season does not get easier. I'm about to, I know this, 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 we're getting a long today, but y'all, I'm about to just go down the, the, season, the season real quick. And it, it's just, you know, being a passionate Bucs fan, you, you get, it, it hurts you because I'm about to run down there. The, the, oh, Lord, this is terrible. The Bucks. this might be the worst season for the Bucs in a while. Um, <laughs> they play the Rams, play the Saints. They play the uh, Panthers in London. They come back home to play, or they go to Tennessee to play the Titans. They can probably win that game. But the Panthers and the Titans, they can, they, they can probably win. Mariota is not playing good. Then they go to Seattle. That's going to be hard. They go to Seattle. That's going to be hard. In Seattle, they play Russell, or Russell Wilson's going to spread the Bucks defense if they haven't gotten their players back by then. They're back home to play the Cardinals. Um... Back home to play the Saints. Damn. They go to Atlanta to play. They go to Atlanta to play the Falcons. The Falcons are not a good team this year. Then they go to Jacksonville. Not worried about the Jaguars. Then they come home to play the Colts. The Colts were set is playing one hell of a season right now. Colts are playing good. They go to Detroit to play the Lions. The Lions are playing good. And then they play the Texans in Tampa. The Texans are surprised are playing good. And Deshaun Watson is amazing. So, and then they're back home against the Falcons at the end of the season. So, you got the Bucs season. <laughs> this could be one crappy year. Yeah, but as long as it don't look like that year. As long as it don't look like that year when we won only one game. You remember that? Remember that game? And me and you was in the room. We was in the room looking at that shit. <laughs> when they finally only won one game that whole year. I, I, I just, I don't know what it's going to take. And I know it's still early in the season, so. They can see we can the Bucks all one and four. Then we can revisit this lost season. But I mean, as fans, you know, we still have faith. We still have hope that the Bucks will. But it's just being realistic. Like this team, and I don't know what it is. Like I, I, I don't know. They have the talent. I just, I, I don't know what it is. And yesterday it hurt. Like that was like a little, like somebody just hit you in the gut because that's a game the Bucks had to win, and they let the Giants take it away. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much, and gave them and gave them some baby life. So I get it, man. Yep. Now, now Daniel Jones and the Giants, you know, feel like they on top of the on top of the world. Yeah, pretty much. I agree. Well, y'all, that was it. Um, you know, y'all heard the Bucks talk for the third week in a row. Look, man, if they keep getting their ass whooped like this, I don't know if I can make it past week six. But I, t- <laughs> I don't know if y'all gonna be getting some more. <laughs> <laughs> but but we gotta be consistent. We gotta keep calling out the bullshit. And I know they're listening. Tampa Bay, y'all listening, man. Y'all fix that secondary, man, and get us and give us Jalen Ramsey. All right, give us Jalen Ramsey, and we'll be a little satisfied. Uh, at least we're losing the rest of the goddamn season because we know we can fix it with another defensive coordinator or something. Damn, but shit, do something. God damn it, you know. Any any closing remarks, Beham? I'm good, man. You know, it's, go Bucks, and it's hard to be a Bucks fan. <laughs> Hey, y'all heard it in his voice, man. He's he's extremely hurt. I was hurt last night. I I was cussing like a mug, like a mug last night. I was I would piss. I would piss. But hey, man, like you said, man, go Bucks is hard to be a Buck, man. This your boy JB and B Ham. Y'all holler at us. <laughs>